Guys? Yeah? What uh, happens if I just drop this, like, there? Hey, you beautiful buccaneers, Falcor here. So when seasons were first released, we were met with a very slow start. Merchant shipwreck missions for three months, followed by, um, more merchant missions. Honestly, I never understood this one. Merchant missions in Season 1, followed by merchant missions in Season 2? And then they realized people were enjoying these new merchant missions, so they nerfed them. Oh, yeah, and this thing as well. The first two seasons were indeed very lackluster, but the seasons themselves were something new and interesting, so for the most part it kept us going, but by the end of season 2 we were all feeling a little starved for content. But then they announced the amazing collab with Disney, five new tall tales, and now moving on to season 4, a whole new paradise for us to explore. Things really are picking up traction in Sea of Thieves right now, and it's great to see so many new faces enjoying the game. But what about season 5, season 6, and season 7? Here is my predictions. Season 5. One of the best updates we ever had for Sea of Thieves wasn't exactly huge in terms of content, but it added an amazing amount of depth to the game, and that update was Shrouded Spoils. In Shrouded Spoils, emergent threats were updated and added, such as the Kraken and Mermaid statues all started to drop loot, which expanded the game and made everything the potential to make us money. New emergent skeleton ships and megalodons were also added, which also dropped loot. We also got a new weather effect, the fog, and on top of all this we got further ship customization, able to change our ship's cannons, helm, and capstan. Although this wasn't really a content drop, it really fleshed out the game and made it more accessible to people playing, and I believe we shall also be getting the same treatment in Season 5. I feel like Season 5 will essentially be a filler update that will add a plethora of new tools, abilities, and things for us to do, but not really evolve the storyline or expand the world. I think Season 5 will essentially be the wouldn't it be cool if they added this update, rather than the end game update? Speaking of end game, let's move on to season 6. Season 6, I believe, will be the season that'll finally expand the game's end game, and give us the much anticipated Athena update, which has been talked about so, so often. Athena missions and other end game content has always been very lackluster, and the developers are well aware of this. They have said on numerous occasions that the reason they have not touched on it sooner, because they wanted to make it somewhat easier for people to climb the ranks to start doing Athenas themselves, and they also wanted to make sure that Athena quests felt both unique and hit the mark in terms of what players want. And within the Pirate Legend hideout, the shipwright also has a new piece of dialogue, talking about the ship in the bay being her project, and one day she'll figure out a way of fitting it through that waterfall. For those who don't know, it has always been intended for Pirate Legends to use the Legend hideout as their spawn point, and upon beginning your voyage, you would blast through the waterfall and into the world. Out of all the new things coming to the game, this is the one the community I feel would love the most. Speaking of new things, segue, 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 segue. I'm excited to announce a new partnership with the amazing people over at Apex Gaming PCs. With our powers combined, we have become pap tax pal pal Um, okay, let's let's not combine the names. Apex Gaming PCs have partnered with myself to bring all you people top-tier gaming PCs, and they even allowed me to make my own branded PCs for you guys to use your eye holes on so you can have a gander. They come in three tiers, the Sloop, the Brigantine, and the Galleon. Purchasing one of these fine vessels will make your game go from this... ...to this. And no need for you to worry about all that PC building yourself, just simply pick the parts you want, and they'll slap it all together for you, and ship it out to you ASAP. Or if you're a console gamer and unsure what you need, each tier of the PC will offer you HD high FPS gaming, so just pick one and sail the crisp oceans with the rest of us. Join the PC Master Race in style! Plus, if you use code FALCOR at checkout, you can save yourself some lovely money. All the links you need are down below. Go check them out.
And now let's get back to the video. Season 7. Season 7, I believe, will eventually wrap up some story arcs, or at the very least shed some light on the plans the developers have for some important lore characters, such as Flameheart Senior, Flameheart Junior, <clears throat> sorry, I mean the Servant of Flame, and the mysterious Captain. I also think we'll see the return of a small set of tall tales and the return of Jack Sparrow and crew to guide us through some of these adventures and introduce us to some new mechanics, such as a new dynamic game mode within adventure mode, such as a turf war system, or perhaps an entirely new faction, or possibly a faction we've already met making their way into adventure. I think it will also introduce us to a new captaincy mode, which offers the players a sort of guild system within the game, where everyone in your guild, whenever they play on whatever server they play on, adds ranks depending on what they do. And these ranks offer us new ship types, open up new areas to explore, and possibly even open up a prestige system. Season 6 and 7 will be the updates that will blow our minds in terms of content added, but I believe Season 5 will seem rather lackluster at first glance, but it spanned the core gameplay of the game more than any other update prior. And in Season 8, Hits Reg will be fixed. <laughs> no.